This PC right here is a computer that I traded in from a customer who was absolutely distressed. They told me an ordeal that was so bad that I actually want to make a video for you guys to tell you how bad some local retailers are. Now, apparently this local retailer has gone out of business since uh, the time when they last got their PC changed over. But basically, this whole PC that you see in front of you cost the customer 1700 Australian dollars in total. And we're gonna break this down for you. And initially, four years ago, they bought a like OEM refurbished motherboard, something like this, and an i7-4770 and 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, a GTX 1063 gigabyte, and this was all for $1,100 in the system. And now they had problems with this system over a year ago. They took it to the store and then the store charged them another $600 to replace the motherboard, CPU and memory. And not only that, they only got one single stick of DDR4 8 gigabytes. They got an i3 10100F and also one of the cheapest B560M motherboards I've seen that only has two memory slots. And I mean, this is okay if you're paying only a few hundred dollars, but $600 is excessive in my opinion for this kind of upgrade. Now, fast forward a year later, this PC now has problems where they came to me and they said, look, the PC no longer works properly. Sometimes it won't even boot. And then if it does boot, it just freezes and stutters in Windows to the point where it's unusable. And so they came to me and they got an RTX 2080 Ti system. They were over the moon and then they left me with this mess right here. But as always at Tech Yes City, I love looking into problems with used PCs and also discovering what is wrong with this system exactly. So let's get right on into it and see what we can find. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. So the first problem we have come into here straight away is the graphics card. And looking at this GPU, I think it's a display problem where either the connections have blown out or they're just extremely filthy to the point where they need to be cleaned. And the way I can tell this is if you've got a keyboard that has a numlock light, or if it's an RGB keyboard, that's even easier to tell. You can then boot up the PC and you'll see the numlock is booting up and it's lighting up after a few seconds, meaning that this PC is actually initializing properly. And even the GPU itself, I believe is working properly because if the GPU is faulty, then a lot of the times the PC just won't boot up properly and the keyboard won't initialize. So we're gonna clean this GPU down a little bit later, but also it is missing a fan blade as well, which <laughs> this is usually indicative of a graphics card that's been uh, used for crypto mining in the past. When you see this filthy rear connection ports, as well as just in general, a, a graphics card that's just this dirty and then a missing fan blade, it's usually indicative of a, a GPU that's been used for mining. So perhaps this store was using GPUs that are on crypto mining benches and then putting them in gaming PCs and selling them. I mean, that's just after seeing the price gouging and all this that I'm seeing, I wouldn't be surprised if this was the case here. But what we're going to do right now is we've just replaced the graphics card with a RX 570. I actually picked this up on a used PC parts hunt. It was looking like it was in really clean condition. I got this for 40 Aussie dollars. So we're just gonna put this in this PC and then see if everything boots up as well as an additional eight gigabyte stick of DDR4 memory that I got for 15 Aussie dollars on a used PC parts hunt just to make it a 16 gigabyte dual channel configuration. Then we're gonna see if that boots. So our PC seems to be all up and running 100% now. We will leave this running on a stress test for a couple of hours. Though also another problem I came into when I initially installed it was that it was taking a long time to shut down. The desktop was sluggish 
And then I just simply unplugged this 500 gigabyte hard drive here, which is now over 11 years old, and that fixed the problem. So <laughs> this is just, there's two big problems we've come into today. Well, actually three, if you consider one single stick of eight gigabytes of DDR4 to be called a gaming PC, but this is just shocking that a PC store would do this. I, I'm really like just blown away by some of the stuff that um, like, I, again, I, I kind of would expect this of maybe some random seller on marketplace, but not from an actual PC shop that's supposedly specializing in PCs. But let's, um, let's leave the stress test running. I'm also going to run a mem test just to be 100% sure that there's no problems with the original eight gigabyte stick of DDR4. And then we will finally get on to cleaning this PC up as well as cleaning down that GTX 1063 gig and see if we can get that to work. So we finally cleaned up this PC top to bottom and it is looking really good now, or at least a lot better than it was before. However, we did run into one more big problem and that was when we pulled the CPU cooler off, the i3-10100. And that was, there was virtually no thermal paste installed. I've got it, the amount of thermal paste that I rubbed off the cooler on camera for you guys on the cloth here and you can see that there's just almost none, which is really bizarre because when you buy an i3-10100 or a 10100F with the cooler, it usually comes with pre-applied thermal paste on the CPU cooler. So they, there must have been some kind of used shenanigans of them using a CPU or reusing something, whether it be the cooler or the CPU, and then passing it off as new parts. Uh, so that's what that indicates to me. So we've reapplied some fresh thermal paste there, and we've also done a little bit of extra cable management, added in some a few more zip ties, just because there's there was a few loose cables at the front and the back. Though with that aside, it's time to photograph this thing, add in a keyboard, monitor, and mouse, just because where I'm locally, gaming PC setups right now, especially the lower the price they are, they are just flying off the shelves here. So let's see what magic we can do. So now this PC is all stress tested, working 100%. We are now ready to sell it. I'm going to try get around 400 Aussie dollars for this system. And that leaves us with roughly $100 profit because we did have to add another GPU, memory, and also a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. And so that's a fair value, I think, because it was a trade-in. I did come into problems. The problems could have been less worse than I thought they would be, but it ended up being that there was quite a few problems and some of those problems cost me money. The GPU, of course, being the worst problem that you can come into when you're doing a trade-in. That's pretty much what we came into here with this setup. Though speaking of that GPU, the GTX 1063 gigabyte, we actually came into some success after we fully cleaned it down, especially those ports at the back. I gave them a nice thorough clean and then we changed the thermal paste around and it ended up working absolutely fine after that. However, the fan blade on one of the fans does need to be replaced and I'll have to order that in and wait for it to come before I can use this GPU again as the problem with, even though the temperatures are actually fine, the problem with this GPU is that it actually starts vibrating due to the balance being off on that fan. Now that you're missing one blade, it actually starts spinning funny and you've got a GPU that essentially causes the, even the whole system to start wobbling. Though the main message that's coming out of this video, I wanna stress this, is if you guys, a lot of you guys know what I do here at Tech Yes City, it's more of an enthusiast-based channel where we get deep into building PCs, fixing things up. And so you guys, I feel like a lot of you guys are very knowledgeable as well. And the main thing to come out of this is just to let people know, relatives and friends and things like that, just let them know. And that way you can help them avoid getting ripped off like this retailer right here was doing to customers. 
And the thing is, I can't actually name, because I know there's gonna be people in the comments, what's the business name? Who was the retail? I actually looked into it. I can't name them in this video simply because I don't have receipts. I don't have proof of what I'm saying in today's video actually happened because I did ask the person when they traded in to give me the invoices and things like that. And they said they didn't have them no longer, but there is pretty much this business. I have heard a lot of stories about it on the Gold Coast here where I'm at. And so it doesn't surprise me that this story, I would believe it to be true. Anyway, guys, all that aside, do be weary of the complete ripoffs that are going out there at the moment in the PC industry, whether it's used PCs or new PC parts, new builds. I've just heard a lot of stories lately. And in fact, a lot of people have just been buying PCs off me and coming to me and going, oh man, it's so good that you are here. You just got PCs that work. And I'm thinking to myself, like, isn't that just normal business practices? Like, <laughs> so it's confusing how sort of, I don't know, at least here locally, I feel like the quality of service has actually dropped off a lot. And if you're just doing normal business practices, you're actually, you've got a good business and people are gonna keep coming back to you. But I don't exactly go above and beyond when I sell a PC. Um, say for instance, I don't message the people a week later like, oh, how was your purchase? How was your PC running? I don't do any of that extra aftercare stuff. I just put the PC up for sale, say, look, if you have any problems, I'm here to help, come back and see me. And that's pretty much my service. So <laughs> the, the final thing to talk about is that 350 watt power supply too. That's really a budget entry level power supply. I've actually got no problems coupling with a GTX 1063 gig or an RX 570. It's just that if someone's paying 1100 Aussie dollars for a system, they should at least be getting a 550 watt or a 500 watt power supply, not a 350 watt budget power supply that Corsair themselves no longer produce, I believe. I don't believe these power supplies are made any longer. So kind of surprised to see that too, but for what it's worth, it does do the job with a little setup like this, absolutely fine. But yeah, it's, it's something that's left to be desired. Also, there's some really good news and that is stay tuned for episode two of the $100 PC flip up challenge. We had tremendous success already in flipping that system. We actually got more than we bargained for in that episode. So do stay tuned for it. And if you've stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech, yes, content, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.